Welcome to Stellar Insights. Today, uh, we're going to be diving deep into the unexpected challenges faced by the crew of Apollo 8. Um, you know, picture this. December 1968. It's a crazy time, right? The world is kind of teetering on edge. Global tensions are high. But in the middle of all this, you have three astronauts. They're gearing up for this totally unprecedented mission. Yeah. The first manned flight to the moon. Yeah, it was um, a lot of pressure on that crew. And it, yeah. it started even before they even left the launch pad. Frank Borman, the mission commander, he ran into a snag right before launch. He gets called back to Houston for an emergency meeting. And, you know, this must have brought back some difficult memories of the Apollo 1 fire, a real tragedy that shook the space program to its core. Oh, absolutely. The Apollo 1 fire, yeah. uh, where we tragically lost three astronauts, yeah. you know, it had such a huge impact on safety. And you know how NASA assessed risk going forward. And Borman, he was known for being so meticulous, you know, especially with that Apollo command module hatch. He kept checking it over and over again. He had to be absolutely sure that it would open no matter what. Right. And as if that wasn't enough pressure. You know, the decision to send Apollo 8 to the moon in December, it was uh, directly tied to what the Soviets were doing in the space race. They had just launched their Zond spacecraft. It orbited the moon successfully. And that really lit a fire under NASA. They had to stay ahead in this competition. For sure. And then the launch of Apollo 8 itself. That presented like the first major unexpected challenge for the crew. I mean, the Saturn V rocket, most powerful rocket ever built at that time. Well, it produced a way more violent liftoff than they were expecting. Oh, yeah. The sheer power of that Saturn V. It was just unlike anything anyone had experienced before. Yeah. The shaking was so bad that Bill Anders, the lunar module pilot, he was actually afraid the rocket was coming apart during the ascent. It was partly because of this thing called pogo oscillation. Yeah. Um, think of it like a car with a wobbly tire. Except in this case, the tire is a massive rocket engine. So you have these vibrations from the powerful engines. They kind of resonate with the rocket structure. Yeah. Which creates this intense shaking, especially up in the upper stages where the crew was, man, it's just hard to imagine that level of physical stress on those astronauts mm -hmm. during that launch. Yeah. And the challenge is uh, they didn't stop there. Shortly after they separated from the S-4B, you know, the third stage of the Saturn V, they had another near catastrophic event, almost a collision. Right. The S-4B, it was supposed to move away, but it stayed dangerously close to the spacecraft. Borman had to think fast mm -hmm. and make this evasive maneuver. They barely avoided a collision, which really shows just how unforgiving space is and how important it is to be constantly alert and ready to react. It's true. Even with all that planning, there was always a chance for things to go wrong demanding split-second decisions. That could be the difference between success and failure. Yeah. And it wasn't just the spacecraft throwing curveballs. The astronauts themselves, they faced unexpected physical challenges too, starting with Borman getting hit with severe motion sickness. That was a big concern for mission control because it could have impacted his ability to command the mission. I mean, try to picture this, trying to stay focused, make critical decisions while dealing with the awful effects of motion sickness all while you're in space. Borman actually downplayed his condition. He didn't want mission control to worry. He was determined to push through. You know, he really embodied that grit and resilience. That became a hallmark of the Apollo program. Yeah. He knew the world was watching. And the stakes were unbelievably high. It's incredible how determined he was. Hmm. But even he couldn't escape the toll space travel takes on the body. Later on in the mission, he was dealing with exhaustion. He was encouraging his crewmates to get some rest, even with all the excitement of their journey. You know, that's something we often overlook, the human element in space exploration. Even with the best technology and meticulous planning, human physiology and well-being, they play a critical role in mission success. These astronauts weren't just dealing with the physical stresses of spaceflight. They were also millions of miles away from home, isolated in a completely foreign environment with the weight of the world's expectations on their shoulders. Yeah, and as if the physical challenges weren't enough, the crew also had to face a bunch of technical issues mm. with the Apollo command module's complex systems. Right, one example was a malfunction in the primary evaporator, a vital part of the spacecraft's life support system. This forced them to switch to the backup system, showing how important it is to have redundant systems in spacecraft design. Those malfunctions, they must have been constant reminders about how fragile their life support was out there and how crucial it was for the engineers to have backup systems for everything. Absolutely. It was a constant reminder of how unforgiving space is and how one small failure could have been disastrous. Absolutely. It was a constant reminder of how unforgiving space is and how one small failure could have been disastrous. And then there was the time when Jim Lovell, the command module pilot, he accidentally reset the guidance system. Oh, wow. That sounds critical. 
the guidance system that was essential for you know controlling the spacecraft's position and direction. How did that even happen? Well, it was a simple mistake, but it could have been a disaster. Lovell was trying to align the spacecraft's platform, which involved inputting data into the computer, but in that cramped command module, he bumped the wrong switch and boom, the whole guidance system reset. So the computer basically lost its place. Exactly. The guidance platform lost its lock. It didn't know where the spacecraft was or which way it was pointing in space. A huge problem when you're millions of miles from Earth. So what happened next? How'd they fix that? Well, thankfully, Bill Anders, he was in charge of navigation. He stayed calm and reacted quickly. He used the spacecraft's sextant and the stars to manually realign the platform a few tense moments for sure, but they got control back. Anders' quick thinking and his knowledge of the stars saved the day. It really shows how well-trained the astronauts were and how they could handle these unexpected situations. But man, that incident, it really highlighted how complex and sensitive those systems were. Yeah. One small error could have been catastrophic. Absolutely. It shows how important the human element is in space exploration. Even with all the technology, human error is always possible. And being able to think on your feet is critical, speaking of human factors. There was another incident where Borman actually snapped at Anders during one of their lunar photography sessions. That's interesting, because so far we've seen how well the crew worked together under pressure. What happened there? It was during one of their orbits around the moon. Anders was trying to get a specific photo of a landmark on the moon, and it required Borman to maneuver the spacecraft into a precise position. I bet maneuvering a spacecraft in lunar orbit while trying to get a specific shot must have been tricky. It was a delicate operation, and Borman, already tired and stressed from the mission, he got frustrated with Anders' constant requests for adjustments, and that led to a bit of a heated exchange. So the pressure was getting to Borman. Even someone as experienced and level-headed as him, how did Anders take it? Well, he understood the pressure Borman was under. He didn't take it personally, and he continued to guide Borman patiently until they got the shot they needed. That says a lot about their professionalism and dedication to the mission. Even when things got tense, they put aside their personal feelings and focused on the task at hand. Their ability to work together effectively, even in stressful situations, was key to Apollo 8's success. It's a testament to their training and dedication to the mission. But beyond those technical problems and personal challenges, the crew of Apollo 8, they also had a unique psychological experience. They were the first humans to leave Earth's orbit and go into deep space. And that had a profound impact on them. It's hard to even imagine what it must have been like to be so far away from home looking back at our planet from that distance. How did that affect the astronauts? Well, they described feeling a sense of awe and wonder, but also a humbling realization of just how fragile Earth is and our place in the universe. That experience stayed with them and shaped their views on the importance of global unity and protecting our environment. And they were also acutely aware of the risks they were taking, knowing that one wrong move could be fatal. To be so far from home with the whole world watching, it must have been incredibly isolating and daunting. It was, they were pioneers venturing into uncharted territory physically and mentally. But despite all the challenges, they kept their cool, their sense of humor and their dedication to the mission. Their bravery and resilience opened the door for future missions to the moon and inspired generations to come. Their journey is a remarkable testament to the human spirit, overcoming obstacles and pushing the boundaries of exploration. It also highlights the unexpected challenges that come with venturing into the unknown. What other unanticipated hurdles did the crew of Apollo 8 encounter during their historic mission? One of the biggest and least expected challenges came during their return to Earth. Re-entry, it's often shown as the smooth descent. But for the Apollo 8 crew, it was way more intense and unpredictable. They were coming in at over 24,000 miles per hour as they hit the Earth's atmosphere. Wow, that's incredibly fast. It's hard to imagine the precision needed to navigate a re-entry at that speed. What kind of dangers were they facing? At those speeds, even a tiny miscalculation in their angle or their timing could have been disastrous. Too shallow of an entry, and they risk skipping off the atmosphere and bouncing back into space, but too steep, and the spacecraft could burn up from all that friction. So it was like walking a tightrope with no room for error. What did they have in place to make sure they got back safely? Well, the Apollo command module had a really strong heat shield. To protect the crew from the extreme temperatures during re-entry, it was essential for absorbing and dissipating all that heat preventing the spacecraft from burning up. It's amazing how engineers were able to come up with these advanced materials and technologies to withstand those conditions. But even with the best heat shield, I imagine the forces during re-entry were still immense. Oh yeah, they were subjected to extreme G-forces, mm -hmm. many times stronger than gravity. 
As they slowed down from that incredible speed, these forces could cause blackouts injuries, even damage the spacecraft. It must have been terrifying. Going through those G-forces while hurtling towards Earth, was there anything else unexpected during re-entry? Another big challenge was a communication blackout. It happened during the most critical part of re-entry. As the spacecraft flew through the atmosphere, it created a layer of ionized plasma around it. And that plasma blocked radio signals. They were cut off from mission control for several minutes. So they were completely alone, hurtling towards Earth with no way to talk to anyone. That must have been scary for everyone involved. It was a very anxious time. Mission Control had no idea what was happening. Or if the crew was having any problems, they could only wait and hope, trusting in the astronauts and the spacecraft. So they eventually got back in contact. Yes. As the spacecraft got lower and slowed down, the plasma disappeared. And the radio signals could get through. You can imagine the relief at Mission Control when they finally heard the crew's voices, confirming they were safe and descending with parachutes. What an incredible moment. But even with the parachutes out, the mission wasn't over. They still had to land safely in the Pacific Ocean. That's right. Reentry was just one part of the challenge. They had recovery teams in place, ready to pick them up. But that was a complex operation, too, with its own set of risks. It's really impressive, all the planning and coordination involved in a mission like this, from start to finish. So many things could have gone wrong. But the Apollo 8 crew overcame every obstacle. With skill, courage, and determination, they showed what humans can achieve and the possibilities of space exploration. Their mission was a turning point in history. It showed that we could go to the moon, and it paved the way for the lunar landing. Apollo 8 didn't just expand our knowledge of space. It inspired generations to dream of exploring the unknown. Their story is a powerful reminder of what we can accomplish when we work together with a shared goal and unwavering resolve. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the unexpected challenges of Apollo 8. Until next time, keep exploring. Tom Stone Cypher and Ben James. Colonel Borman, would you care to say a few words to the crew? Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, we're just very happy to be here, and we appreciate all your efforts. And I know you had to stay out of here over Christmas, and that made it tough. I'm, uh, Jim and I always seem to fly in December. We made it home before Christmas in 65. But we, we can't tell you much how, as, how much we really appreciate you being here and how proud it is for us to participate in this event because thousands of people made this possible and I guess we're all just part of the group. Thank you very much.